Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and this is where we're going to wrap up the quest for the metric threads. We'll find out if I did all that work for something or nothing. I can tell you I made a pile of gears and people are going to ask me well you only needed two or three to make that thread that you're going to cut. Yeah that's true but I you know making gears the first time I did it was fun after that it's just work you know and uh, so I thought well I'll go ahead and I'll look down the chart they've got and make every size gear that they call for for any kind of a metric thread whether it's a main you know one of the main threads or not and so that's what I did and it took me a heck of a long time a lot of hours there anyway I, I, I've got down now I've got uh, ready to start wrapping this thing up and uh, I don't know if I mentioned or not, some months ago I ordered a, a new red dot for my, for my Ruger. I, uh, I decided I'd buy one of the more expensive ones. This one's about 230 bucks, whereas the True Glow jobs I've been using were about 40 bucks. And uh, the problem with the True Glow is they ate batteries like a kid with a box of M&Ms, you know. Uh, You'd be going along having, having it in there for two or three days and all of a sudden the dot would go away. Well, I took one of the, I saved some of the old batteries that uh, had gotten used like that and I put one of them in here. This guy's been running 14 hours a day for about a week on, on the same battery that, uh, that the True Glow wouldn't, wouldn't crank up on. So that's why this costs a lot of money is because it is reliable. It's a, a Vortex Viper. I'd ordered a Venom, but it uh, it didn't come in. I don't know if you can see the dot or not. It's in there though. It's a 6MOA dot, which means it uh, would cover a, a 6 inch diameter circle at 100 yards. Excuse me, at 100 yards. I'm getting a little hoarse here. I think hay fever's on me or something. And uh, I had ordered the the Venom model, but uh, it was like a five month back order and I got tired of waiting so I switched to the Viper. And the main difference between them is the the Viper battery lasts about uh, 750 hours and the Venom battery lasts about 3,000 or so they say. So, you know, that and the batteries on the bottom of one and on the top of the other. Other than that, not much difference. Lifetime warning and all that sort of thing. And, uh, and I had some money left over. You know, and I thought, well, am I going to buy uh, some uh, pin gauges or am I going to buy a timer? Well, <laughs> I bought a shot timer instead of the pin gauges. And I, I guess this is about one and a half of those sets of pin gauges worth, but I've really had a good time with it. Me and my nephew-in-law went out and we timed each other and everything and we had a, a really good time. What it is, it's a shot timer, and you push the button. I've got to set for delay so I can time myself. And, well, i got to turn it on first on. What the purpose of it is, is for you to, to know how, how fast you are, where you need to improve, where you're losing time. And this works just like the one they use to time the, the steel challenge. In fact, I think a lot of them use this same one. You just push the button, of course I got a three second delay. And when you hear that, you start, you know, firing on your target. And when you get through, you can come back, press review, and you can see how much time that you're using for each thing you're doing. I think I like it a lot better than a set of pin gauges. I each to his own, huh? All right, so I've talked too much. and. We need to go on ahead and uh, check and see, you know, if, if I can cut a metric thread or not. Like they say, the proof of the pudding's in the eating, so let's get a spoon and get started. I kept saying I needed drawers under the cabinet to put my junk in, and so I went to an auction and I got those. They had some four drawer cabinets, but they got bid up higher than I wanted to pay. The little one on the right I paid a buck for it and the one on the left I paid seven dollars. 
And if later on I come in some four drawer cabinets at a reasonable price, well I can always chuck these out and put the four drawer in there. It's better than me trying to pretend to be Matthias Wandel and cut them out of wood because the last time I made drawers out of wood, I went through a lot of lumber getting there. While I was at the auction, I got some pretty good taper stuff and some really big reamers. Let's see if I can get that one out. Hang on. That's a nice size reamer there. I think that's about an inch and an eighth. I got three of those. And I got some uh, some Morse taper, number two Morse taper things. And those are, I think, number four. And, more taper there. So I picked up a few things. I also missed one bin of tea nuts that I'd paid for and I thought I had everything and I got home and I looked and sure enough I didn't have that one thing. But they were giant tea nuts that wouldn't have fit my, my lathe or my mill and I only paid 12 bucks and I wasn't going to drive all the way back across Houston to get them. Second, you're counting down. This is the place where I picked up the stuff the last, I guess, two or three auctions. It looks like they must be selling this place off a couple of hundred items at a time. It's certainly got a, a dismal and forlorn look. I guess you'd say a look of desperation. Another thing I got at the auction was this huge micrometer. It was really rusty and crummy looking and and there's no standard with it. I think it's a uh, five to six inch or six to seven, one or the other. I don't remember now. And I got it for 20 bucks, so I figured I could clean it up. Those guys, it was a strange thing I ever saw. They took all the standards from all the micrometers they were selling and put them in a box and sold them as a, as a different lot. So the guy that bought a whole bunch of micrometers, he paid like 30 bucks or more to get the standards. You would think that they're now the year making would be smooth as silk. But when I put that 62, uh, that 60 tooth gear blank on there, I discovered that this guy was, and its hardware was hanging down too far down below. It was mounted under here, and it was going to hit the gear blank, so you know I wouldn't be able to feed the cutter to it. So I had to move this up on the top and. Not perfect. I'm going to redo this whole thing. Probably one of my very next projects. But anyway, even after I got that done, there was a problem. I'll show you where it was. This piece right here was in the way. And I was lucky enough that it's got that chamfer on the edge of it there. If it didn't have that nice chamfer, that thing would have, uh, wouldn't have passed under. As it was, there was just room for this piece of paper to go through it without very much of any drag at all, you know. It, there was a couple thousand clearance, so I know with this particular setup, 60 teeth is as big a gear as I can cut. <clears throat> In the future, I'll have to make another arbor. It hangs down a couple of inches lower so that it'll get all this hardware back up out of my way. Then I can cut even bigger gears. I should be able to cut up at least an 8 inch gear, which I don't even know how many teeth that is. But uh, I'm, I'm glad I got that out of the way, but I mean, you know, that took a couple of hours off my time moving things around. And this, this cutter here is 20 thousandths thinner than the thinnest other cutter that I've used on it so far. So when I tightened my nut up, it was still loose, so I had to go back and machine that nut to have a little hollow inside so it'd go up over the shaft and clamp down on the cutter. And, you know, when it rains, it pours. 
at long last the gear cutting process has come to an end this one I already had but uh, in fact I think this is the first gear I've made right there but all the rest of these were part of this project for making the metric gears uh, threads I'll get it right so now that the gears are cut and they've got the little double keyway in the middle of them and they're mostly pretty well deburred I used the the uh, wire brush on the bench grinder for deburring it seemed to be the fastest way and I think they're pretty clean now so the next step is uh, over here these are some parts that I need that are no longer available from Sears not that gear of course but this little stove bolt it's got a you know square spot under the head to hold it in place this uh, sleeve I'm going to make about two or three of those and these little washers I know this is not available from Sears and this isn't available from Sears I didn't bother to check this because I figured it probably wasn't available anymore either the last time I logged on there and I I did that little chat with somebody in their crew and they said well these would be in stock Monday and they'd send me an email well a bunch of monies have come and gone no email and now I when I log on to Sears parts direct I can't even get to these individual parts really it seems to to not work anymore so this is my next project to go to the store and buy some of these if I can I, I think I can get them at the hardware store and make about three of these sleeves and three of these little washers the way it works is that the sleeve fits inside of the little guy with the ears the bolt goes in the sleeve the washer out here and the and the nut on it and that holds everything tight so that uh, it'll stay in in position so we're we're starting to get really close to actually trying to set it up to cut the, the metric gears and I, I hope that everything works out like it should. It probably will. Uh, but now, I've, when I get these three pieces duplicated or triplicated, whatever, I will. Uh, I'll have it made. Then we. Then we'll get down to the proof of the pudding. Well, I went to Redneck Supply to get some stove bolts, and this is what I got, and I'm converting them to this right here which is more like what's in the, the machine although the one in the machine has got a little smooth shoulder right out here I think we can probably get by without it I'm going to make three bushings I'm just going to cut them off in between each other and part them off when I get uh, when I get to the right spot they should be 1.2 inches long that gives me 1.3 inches right there to do the job. Plenty of room to cut it down to fit. So there you go. I guess I left it this way yesterday, so I better check and see what the heck the diameter was. And I'll get a real micrometer to finish it off. That's 82 thousandths away from done, I guess. So I'll just come into here, touch off. Get about 20 thousandths of it right there, maybe. That's the way it'll go. I had these pieces to, you know, to clean up, make sure this end where I parted it off was clean, and make sure that the, the length was just right. And I didn't want to try to put it in the chuck, so I made uh, a little expanding mandrel there out of a piece of scrap, you know, and I, I drilled it for 
quarter twenty and I threaded it just you know part of the way down so that when the screw went in it hit where the threads got more shallow and spread the thing out good and it worked really nice and so I've built two of these I was going to make three but I realized that uh, I've already got two of these on there and I, I don't think there's anything called for four gears on that thing at one time so I've got enough parts made now I've got enough gears I got enough bushings I got enough sleeves and I got enough washers so now to set the set the little booger up try to cut a thread alright so everything's cleaned up and fitted to uh, pretty much the same size as, as the original stuff got uh, the little sleeve with the bushing washer and of course the tool the uh, bolt to hold it all together there's two of them and I'm pretty well ready to go now to put it together and I'll have to see what size metric nuts and bolts that I've got here and we'll make that thread hopefully okay I made a drawing of uh, of the instructions here what gears to put where and of the uh, quadrant this is a 10 by 1.5 millimeter and so is this so I've got stuff to compare it to and what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a 10 by 1.5 millimeter pitch thread I've got a piece of 14 millimeter aluminum over there I'm going to turn down and then we'll set up to start threading it all right now I'll show you what, what gears I've put into there I only had to use two of the gears that I made one is the uh, uh, 48 and the other is the 52 48 52 and I think I'm understanding the instructions correctly and the lead screw looks to me like it feeds at the right rate for that sort of a thread and the gears run pretty good. There's a tiny little slop there, I guess, and something. I can hear a little tick, 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 but running pretty good. So let me turn down this uh, piece of aluminum, and then we'll put a threading tool in there and go for it. Okay, if I have understood the um, instructions, and I should wind up with a, a, a 10 millimeter by 1.5 thread. Set the gearbox here. Right. We'll, we'll find out. I'm going to make a little scratch here. I turned it down just a little bit below 10 millimeters because the, the bolt over there is actually a little below 10 millimeters. And I've done that with uh, Imperial threads before and they came out pretty good so anyway we're going to put the thing in gear <coughs> and we're going to try to make a scratch here I'll run it in a little bit and then we'll check it with a thread gauge and see if we're right That's too fast for an old man. I believe it matches up, so uh, I'm going to slow this thing down a little bit so that when I stop it doesn't run into this guy here. Not back gear, but it's it's certainly slower. I can probably handle that. 
All right, let's take a reasonable cut here. Oh, idiot. Ah, you have to return it to zero, don't you? See what happens. I stopped it better that time. It's sure hard to resist the urge to un undo the bites <laughs> half nuts. Double check that now they got a deeper cut. And it still looks right. So I, it must be right if it looks right. Turned in a pretty good cut. I think it fits. Need some uh, spring cuts. It's a little bit tight. I think the deal is this end's been springing away because I haven't advanced the tool any yet and it's been steady cutting. So and that's, that's a nice tight fit right there. So there you are. I can cut a metric thread with this sleeve. Not much fun not being able to use the threading dial but what the heck. There it is. My first metric thread on this uh, on this lathe. So I guess now that's all that's left to do is go and see if we got a Bubba joke or something like that. Well, it seems like Bubba and Cooter got a job working for the local city government there, you know, and so their boss sent them out to the library there. He wanted to find out how tall the flagpole was so they got there you know and they're both standing there looking up at it and been doing that a little bit and this woman comes walking up and says uh what are you guys doing you know and Bubba says well he says we're supposed to figure out how tall this uh this flagpole is but we ain't got no ladder the lady says well, just a minute give me give me that wrench out of your toolbox there and they hand her a wrench and she undoes some bolts lays the flagpole down takes the tape measure out of the toolbox and measured it she says it's 18 foot 6 inches and walks off. Bubba looks at Cooter and he says, you know Cooter, he says, that's just like a smart addict woman. He says, we want to know how tall it is and she tells us how long it is. Well, that's all folks. Uh, you all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you've got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.